God bless you. I hope all is well with you today and so glad you made your way back to watching us here at God's Got a Plan. Uh, today we're going to do the follow up from part one of, uh, of Matters of the Heart. We want to talk about the matters of the heart because we realize the, the heart is the seat of our emotions. We talked about some of that in our last program. And it's so very important that we realize now that God is trying to trying to purge us. He's trying to clean us out of that old way of doing things, that old way of thinking. Matter of fact, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man, if any woman be in Christ, you are a new creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. But many of us, we really haven't been able to grasp the new because we haven't yet unloaded or let go of some of that stuff that's in our heart that is keeping us from that, that, that relationship that would bring us even closer to Christ. See, I want you to understand he's looking for a holy people, not a self-righteous people, but he's looking for somebody that has a heart that is fixed, that is determined. In other words, someone who has a made up mind. I want to know this man named Jesus. Do you want to know him tonight? Well, I'm going to pray and believe tonight that by the time you finish this program tonight, you're going to know a little bit more of about this word of God. That's going to let's just say stir something up in you that will draw you a little bit closer to him and to the kingdom work and whatever it is he's called you to. Let me just pray for us right now as we go into this fellowship and we see what God has to say to us today. OK, I'm excited. I really want to get this out of me because I've been holding on to it. And, you know, I'm thanking God so much for my cameraman. I got the best in I mean, in the north up here. I mean, the East Coast. He's the man. He knows how to take care of business. Plus, he's a great encourager. And I'm hoping that we here at God's Got a Plan are encouraging you today. We love you. We love you. And we want you to, 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 to live to be the best that you can be. And in order to make that happen, you have to understand the importance of purging out your heart, cleaning out your heart. You know, OK, so, Father, we just want to thank you today. We thank you first and foremost for the leading of your spirit. I'm thanking you for my viewing audience today, Father God, those that would take who have taken time out of their busy schedule, Lord God to sit with us, to be with us. I pray, Father God, that you will speak a word into their spirit, Lord God, not just into their head, but into their mind, into their hearts, and into their spirit, Lord God. I'm believing you today for a transforming word. Inspire today, Father God, through this program. Inspire them to want to be better than what they are, to, be, to want more than what they have, to want to do more than what they've been doing. And I believe, Father God, with you on our side, we can be assured that all things are working together for the good. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If I would start, let's start off. Let's pick up where we left off in uh, Matters of the Heart Part 1. This is Matters of the Heart Part 2. And we started with, uh, we left off with Ezekiel. Chapter 36 in the 26th verse, and this is what it says. Ezekiel says this, a new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. See, uh, see we all need a new, a, new, a new heart. The day you were born... You know, you got your heart, you know, you came prepackaged and everything. But God says in order to, to dwell, in order to, to, let's just say, to be in him, he has to give us a new heart. He has to give us a new heart. See, God says some things are not worth fixing. See, and you need to realize this, this heart of ours is not worth fixing. See, God says I got to replace. It's easy for him. To replace our heart, not easier for him. I should say it like this. It's best for us if he replaces our heart because nothing is too hard for God. He can do what he want to do, how he want to do it. But what I'm talking is best for you that he replaces your heart instead of fix your heart. 
So I, I'm thankful today. I was looking at something in Ephesians chapter, Ephesians chapter four, and, 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 and look what it says in the, in the 18th verse. Being darkened in their understanding, excluding from the life of God, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the ignorance that is in them. Why? Because of the hardness of their hearts. See, I, I want you to understand the Bible says if this gospel be hidden, it is hidden from those of us who are lost. Are you hearing me? See, so even though you can see in the natural, in the spirit, you're not able to see what God is trying to do. And you're not able to see even what the enemy is causing you to do. Sometimes we find ourselves doing those things we don't want to do. But when you have a hardened heart, I want you to understand you are in rebellion against God. God is trying to get us to that place where, where we can reflect and realize, because many, we started out in the church as young folk, grew up in the church, but as we kind of grew up, we kind of walked away from the church, kind of walked away from our Jesus, turned our backs on him, and didn't realize that when we did that, our hearts began to harden. We begin to be drawn. The Bible says we are all drawn away by our own lust. And when we get into that worldly thing, that world is hardening our hearts. And God is trying to get us to that place where we can see that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord. See, we have to get into that place where, Lord Jesus, you are Lord. You're not just my Savior, but you're my Lord. The Bible says he's King of Kings and he's Lord of Lords. I want you to understand you are somebody special to God. But in order to remain special to God, you have to purge yourself of your old self. You got to let go of that old way of thinking, that old way of believing, that old way of doing things. Because, you know, many of us are stuck on, let me say this, I really don't want to say it, but stuck on stupid. You know, why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? I, Paul says it himself. Why am I doing those things that I don't want to do? Romans 7. And then he says, it is the sin that is in me, causing me to do those things that I don't want to do. See, when we think that we have fixed ourselves, I want you to understand, if you could have fixed yourself, you would have started working on yourself a long time ago. But that is the purpose of God's word. God's word is given to us to, 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 to let's just say, to, to purge us, to clean us up, to kind of fix us up, dress us up. Let me show you something in the 12th verse of Ephesians chapter 4. It says this, this word of God is for equipping the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ. But how can you build up somebody else if you toe down? And this is why it's so very important, vitally important, that we wrap our head around this today. We got to get this message today because, my God, the matters of the heart. You got to see what's tugging at the heart, see, because these relationships that we're in can pull us away from God. We can want somebody more than we want Jesus. Are you hearing me? I know you might be waking up with them, whatever the case may be. But the real deal is it is the Lord who woke you up this morning. It wasn't your money, your honey or the alarm clock that woke you up this morning. It was the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one I should be giving the most to. If I want to know anybody, I should want to know about that man who saved me. You should want to know about that man who has saved you. The one that suffered, bled and died for you. The one who's, oh my God, his heart was filled with love to go on that cross for you and for me. His heart had to be filled with love for the, for the father and for us, for you. Why? Because you matter to God. You matter to God. And because you matter to God, I want you to understand God made every provision. He made every provision. Look in Psalm 37. See, you should have gotten your paper and pencil, your notebook, your notepad. You should have gotten your Bible out because you know when, you, when you're going to sit down and watch this program, we're going to give you scripture. Why? Because we want this word of God to lead you into the truth. The Bible says it is the truth that will set you free. See, many of us, we're not able to experience the freedom that God wants us to have, not only because our hearts are a little contaminated, diluted or polluted, we're a little infected, but we don't even want to take the time to open up his word of God. This word of God, which is God's love letter to, to you, to me. 
God wants us to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to know him in, in reference to the pardoning of your sins. We don't have to live that, that, that life that would keep us down, that life that, that, that is designed to destroy. The Bible says Jesus comes that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, we know the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but that's because we're not taking time to do this. Look at that Psalm 37 and 4. Look at what he says. He says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. See, when you can take time to delight yourself in him and we've given time and energies and monies to a lot of other things other than God. And God is saying, when you can delight yourself in the Lord, when you can delight yourself in, in his son, he will give you the desires of your heart. Nothing is too hard for God. And I don't know what you're going through tonight. I don't know what you're confronted with, what you're faith with, but I'm here to tell you today that Jesus is the prescription. He's the answer for the problem, for the cares and the worries of this life. God is able to make a way out of no way. If we can just empty ourselves of ourselves, I'm talking about that heart now, the matters of the heart, the things that would clog us up, the things that would keep us from doing those things that we really want to do because you really want to know God. You really want to serve him and you really want to love him because I'm here to tell you he loves you more than anything. The Bible says he hasn't lost none that God gave him. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight that you're in the hollow of his hand. You might not feel like it. God might feel like he's distant from you and I can't see him. Don't know where he's at. And Lord, please show up in my situation. Well, I'm here to tell you tonight. He's already there. He is already there. And tonight he's, he wants you to know that if you can just pay attention to the matters of the heart, if you can get your heart fixed on those things that would be pleasing to God. Oh, my God, I, I'm here to tell you, God won't turn your situation around. Tonight is your night for breakthrough. Tonight is your night. I'm here. To, you coming out tonight. This situation that you're in and you know what it is that you're in and you know what you've been struggling with. You know how you've been fighting that devil. And some of us have been fighting ourselves. But I'm here to tell you today, if you can just give it up to Jesus. See, Paul says, cast all your cares upon him. Why? Because he want to lighten that load that's on your heart. Cast all your cares upon him because he want to give you the desires of your heart. Now, now, now look at Deuteronomy 8 and 2. Deuteronomy 8 and 2 says this. Deuteronomy 8 and 2 says this. And you shall remember all the ways which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you. He, you see, we had to go through the wilderness so that we can be humbled, so that we can be broken down. Look what he says. And to prove you so you could know what was in your heart. See, God already knows what's in your heart. But many of us can be deceived in reference to what's really in our hearts because we can say, Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, just like Peter said, Jesus, I will die for you. Oh, I go to jail with you, God. But what happened when when it got hot, when adversity came, he, 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 he gave Jesus up. Oh, and I'm here to tell you tonight that God will never give you up. The Lord has not given you up. Don't give up on Jesus because he'll never give up on you. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Oh, I'm talking about a God that will never leave you nor forsake you. How can you not love this man named Jesus? How can you walk away from him? How can you turn your back on him when he's done so much for you? Oh, uh, I know you're feeling a little convicted tonight. I, I know somebody. I see you, sister. I know you're feeling a little convicted tonight because you know you're better than that. Yes, my brother, you know you're better than that. But that's the beauty of God. He's a merciful God. He's a long suffering God. He knew we was going to make these mistakes before we made it. But just like this word says in Deuteronomy 8 and 2, to prove us to know what was in our hearts, whether you would keep his commandments or not, whether you would keep his commandments or not. How close are you living to the commandments? You know, and I realize you might want to say, oh, well, the Ten Commandments is in the old dispensation. We're now in the dispensation of grace because of what Jesus Christ has done, so on and so forth. But let me tell you, those commandments are still very much alive because God is still a jealous God. 
He's still a jealous God and God is still concerned about his people. And you tonight are his people. You're his people. He put me on the air tonight so I can remind you in spite of what you're dealing with. He loves you so much. You are still his people because he'll never, he'll never, he will never let the enemy snatch you out of his hands. Are you hearing me? I know the going might get, get, get tough. Bible says that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. So we have to suffer some things sometimes. Sometimes we got to go through some trials and some tests that's going to prove really where we're at in Jesus, where we're at in the kingdom, where we're at in relationship with him. Bible says I've never seen the righteous forsaken, never seen the righteous forsaken. He will never forsake you. He will never turn his back on you. And look, look at this here. Look at this here. See, the nature of the old heart is to operate from a spirit of rebellion. See, the old heart will not, listen to me now, the old heart will not freely forgive. I mean, it's hard for that old heart to forgive somebody. You do something against me, I can't forgive you. I'm not going to forgive you unless you do something for me or whatever the case may be. That old heart will not have mercy or compassion on another. It's hard for that old heart to have mercy or compassion on somebody. Are you hearing me? And, and, you know, it's one thing to, to, to go through that with, 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 with someone that might be a friend on your job and, and someone in the neighborhood. But it's hard for us to have mercy and compassion on our loved ones. I'm talking about those that might be living in the same home with me. I'm talking about my siblings. I'm talking about my spouses. I'm, I'm talking about those, my, oh my, those who are near and dear to my heart. And sometimes we can just be so hard on folk because they're not doing it the way we want them to do it. This is why God says, I got to give you a clean, a new heart. I got to purge you of yourself. See, and this is why you want to be up under the word. You want to be up under the word. You got to you have to find a word teaching, preaching church where you can get the word so the truth can set you free. So God's word can free you up from from much of what is being, let's just say, sold out there in the world, or much of what you might even be hearing on the air, on the television, or everything that you look at, everything that you hear now, not coming from God. The Bible talks about the false prophet. See, and what it is, the enemy want to get in your heart, contaminate, to infect, to dilute and pollute. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you're anointed and appointed. You have been elected and selected to go to the next level. God going to bring you out tonight. He going to bless you tonight because that's his desire and that's his will for you tonight. He wants you to be blessed. But it starts with us cleaning our hearts out, emptying ourselves of ourselves. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, third verse. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears. See, going to the false prophet. See, one, 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 I want to I want to hear a prosperity message, but I'm so far away from God. I'm not even saved or really converted yet. See, I don't need a message that's going to tickle my ears. I need something that's going to change my heart. I need something that's going to clean me up. I need something that's going to offer me some hope that's going to let me know that I am somebody that's going to let me know that there's a God still sitting high looking low. I need a word that can encourage. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Look at that fourth, that, that fourth verse. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. Do you know how many people have walked away from the truth? I mean, we see it every day. We join, you see people join the church. Oh, they cry. They, 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 they fall all out. They talk about how much they love the Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And then a couple, of, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, they're gone. Why? Because it wasn't, they didn't have that heart transformation. And you have to realize now, we spend more time in the world than we do in church. So the enemy is always coming up against this word of God. His desire is to keep you connected to him. He don't want to lose you. But I'm here to tell you today now. Oh, I, I'm here today. Tell you today that we are of a private stock and you belong to God. You no longer belong to yourself. You no longer belong to the enemy. You belong to God. 
And when you can put the devil on notice and let the devil know what you did yesterday, you're not doing no more. When the last time you was able to speak to your mountain? I didn't say complain about your mountain, complain about your problem, complain about the giants in your life. See, sometimes we just got to have some mustard seed faith to believe that God is working even in, in those situations that don't make sense. I, I just don't understand. I, I can't figure out how we're going to work through this. But you, if you can just keep talking to Jesus, if you can hold on to God's unchanging hand, not let go when the going get tough. And I'm here to tell you, get rooted and grounded in this word of God. My God, my God, you'll be coming out sooner than you think. Oh, my God. Many of us can't sleep at night. Why? Because the stuff that we're carrying on our hearts is keeping us up at night. Got me crying. Got me on the phone talking to sister, brother, talking to folk and complaining and this and that and that and this. But when the last time I talked to Jesus, when the last time I cast all my cares upon him. Oh, if we can just change, oh, Lord Jesus, change up the way we've been doing things. And that's what this message is about tonight. It's trying, this message is to in, evoke us to do something new, to try something different. Those of you that might not be in the body of Christ, might not be saved, I'm here to tell you tonight, you need to come to Jesus. You need to, you need to examine yourself. Because I realize now in the process of trying to fix yourself, you haven't done it as of yet. So you might as well let that somebody come and do a work on you. Someone who has never lost a case, someone that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can actually think. God want to bless you real good. Look what he goes on to say. Their ears have turned from the truth and shall turn unto fables. In other words, they will listen to the lie. They will listen to the lie, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. It's going to be hard to do the work of an evangelist if you don't have a good heart, if your heart's not fixed on Jesus. If you're not getting your instructions and your, oh, uh, you know, I, I'm here to tell you now. See, you got to be able to go in the war room. You got to get down with some prayer every now and then you even need to fast and pray. The Bible says there's some devils, some demons that's not going to come out other than by prayer and fasting. And when the last time you got down with a good fast and spent some time with God, some Holy Ghost time with God, when the last time you've been to a Holy Ghost party? Oh, I'm here to tell you, God want to move in a very special way and it's going to take you being committed committed understanding you are here on purpose to fulfill a purpose God so love you God love you we here at God's got a plan we love you and we want you to know that God is doing great and wonderful things in your life if you would only let him and you let him when you work with him you let him when you stop leaning to your own understanding stop trying to live life on your terms let him show you the better way let him do what he does best. The good news is God's word would cleanse your heart and prepare you for kingdom living. Lord Jesus, are you prepared for kingdom living? See, see that, this, this word of God will not just cleanse you and clean you out, but it will prepare you for kingdom living. And I'm not talking about after life after life. I'm talking about life down here. God's got his kingdom down here now. There's a kingdom down here. There's some folk that are sold out, that are committed, that love the Lord. And they have a made up mind. I'm not going back. I'm not going to give place to the devil. I realize we all fall short, but I've learned how to repent real quick. So when I see myself in error, Lord, forgive me. And that's what God is asking us to do tonight. If you're outside of the kingdom, you need to come to him tonight. Those of you that might be looking at this program and I just have it in my spirit that you're out there and you want to be saved. Repeat these words after me. Dear Father, forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus suffered, bled and died. I believe that he rose the third day that I could live and that I could have life. Father, I believe that I am now forgiven. I believe that you have accepted me. And Lord, I give you permission to do with me what you please. And I thank you for this new beginning in you. If you can believe what you have said, I'm here to tell you today, God has translated you into the kingdom, into his kingdom. 
And all you have to do now is get into a word church and begin to walk by faith and not by sight. It's not easy. It's easier said than done. But this is why you have to get into a word church. Keep watching this program. For those of us, the rest of us, I want to pray for us tonight. Dear Father, I pray right now, Father God, that you will help us, Lord God, to deal with the matters of the heart. Help us, Lord God, to decrease. Help us to know, Father, that the best is yet to come. And Lord God, we're thanking you for these weeks, these two weeks of, of this message, Father God, on the matters of the heart. You've stirred some things up in our spirit. And we're thankful tonight, Lord God, because we realize, Lord God, that the best is yet to come. You're offering us the best. So, Father God, forgive us of any and all sin. That brother, that sister who are backslidden, forgive them, Father. And, Lord God, we're just praying your best in all of our lives. That person who's laying on the sick bed tonight, let your word go out and heal, deliver, restore. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I, I have a word from you from our president. I want to share a word that I, I have from our president today. Our president says this. Listen to this. The best way to not feel hopeless is to get up and do something. Don't wait for good things to happen to you. If you go out and make some good things happen, you will fill the world with hope. You will fill yourself with hope. And that's from our president, Barack Obama. Are you hearing me? So we have to get up and do some things. And I'm here to tell you when you can trust in the Lord, when you can stop leaning to your own understanding, and when you can allow the Lord to have preeminence in your life, then I'm here to tell you he will change that hardened heart. He'll fix a brother. He'll fix a sister today. We love you here at God's Got a Plan. And we want you to know if, you know, at the end of the credits here, you can follow us. If you have any letters, any comments, you can mail them to me. Those of you who have been contacting me through YouTube and the Internet, continue to keep sending that mail. And we love you. You'll see a number you can contact if you're planning on coming to the church. And we just want you to know that God is doing a new thing. If you want to see some past shows, if you missed the show, uh, part one, you can go to our goal 3206 on YouTube and you can pick up those past shows that you may have missed and we want you to keep fellowshipping with us we want you to know we love you God bless you and just keep doing what you're doing and I'm going to tell you my God there's a God sitting high looking low and he's got his sights on you and he's going to keep you why because he's willing ready and able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think we love you here at God's Got a Plan. Come back and see us now. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. <laughs>